and it puts you as their first choice for an event or a sponsorship. That creates a following like no other. How, how's my hair? Good? Your hair is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for hopping on. And I know that a lot of our audience would be able to learn a lot of things from you because you manage the marketing side of a really big brewery. And also you do all the digital marketing and really was able to grow across like the nation for them. Tell me a little bit more about that background, what it was, which company it was, like the numbers you're doing. So then that way we can actually showcase the people like what a young stud like you are doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I'm happy to chat about this. So I, uh, four years ago, started as the social media manager for a restaurant group here in Salt Lake City. Uh, Salt Lake Brewing Company, which owns Squatters and Wasatch Breweries. Uh, they also own the beer side as well. So when I started uh, with them, I started social media and I just picked at every opportunity I could. We need to update our website. We need to start email marketing. We need to update our reviews. We need to make changes to our online reviews so that we appear better out, outward. Um, that was the biggest thing I, I, I did when I started and I loved it. And uh, fast forward a little bit, I, I'm the senior marketing manager for Squares and Wasatch. Uh, and then recently I left to do my own marketing agency, Big Mouth Marketing, which does promotion and uh, supports restaurants, bars, and culinary businesses. I took Squatters and Wasatch with me as my client, which is so great. That's like so it. cool. Tell me more yeah. about like, what were the numbers that you guys are doing? You guys are like, so basically you're doing digital marketing for a brewery. Yes. Uh, which is very interesting. There's, there's laws per state that, that change it up and make it difficult. And in the state of Utah, it's, it's a little challenging. It's, it's a, uh, you know, you have to, in the state of Utah, to sell beer out of a restaurant, you have to brew the beer there. So it's called a brew pub. And so you have to be able to have a brewery, a mini brewery next to the restaurant so you can brew out of there and sell beer out of there. It's, it's a weird concept, but we have nine locations and we actually opened three locations during COVID. We were so grateful that we had support from people and we opened uh, two airport locations and then a, a sandwich shop uh, that I, I helped with all of the setup, all the marketing setup for all those. Um, and then we also distribute in 24 states, which is a lot. That's insane. Like what's yeah. the numbers that you guys are hitting so far? Uh, numbers for the restaurant side, we are doing really, we're doing well again. And especially because we're at the Salt Lake City Airport, so we get a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. We uh, hit in. We hit a uh, a daily gross of about seventeen thousand out of the airports, and then out of a regular restaurant here in the valley, here in Salt Lake, or here in Park City, it's about half that. But it is growing. COVID is uh, wasn't like it used to be. You know, it used to just be you know numbers really down, but now numbers are really growing. And I think with vaccine coming and i think with spring coming we're feeling the push already it's it's exciting that's insane Seventeen thousand a day that's a lot of that's that's really high volume right there really high volume we get a lot of people and uh that's covid now we we've hit much higher days post pre-covid and we're hoping for more post COVID multi-million well. dollar company and you're handling with all the digital marketing Oh, I sure am. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Okay. So you started off as, you know, doing all the, anything that you can do to help them establish more of a digital space. And definitely as, as we were chatting a little bit earlier is that you see a lot of restaurants, they're getting kind of behind with the adaptation to online. And I totally feel the same thing is that this industry, because the margins are so slim, it's very difficult for, for us to be able to jump on to the digital marketing space when the ROI isn't necessarily there to begin with, especially when you're investing in like social media, pictures, reviews, like all those good stuff. So for you, what is the main thing that really drive or move the needle for uh, when, you, when you're helping grow that brewery? Yeah, of course. And I, I can very much relate to that. You have to, with digital marketing and with restaurants having that low margin, it, you really have to prove like the value is here and it absolutely is worth it. Um, an example I have just off the top of my head is uh, social media marketing has been very, very powerful for us at Sparkers and Wasatch because we have new beers. We it's it's kind of our mini PR. You know, it's where we can reach people immediately. 
and create that cult following. And once you get that audience that really is eating up, for lack of a better term, everything you're doing, everything you post is exciting. People get into it. And then people are at your location. Like I heard this beer is on tap right now, or I heard you switched up your menu for St. Patrick's Day. Um, it really, that has been very, very powerful. It almost, it almost, and I would tie that in with, there's that digital marketing piece. And there's also this grassroots piece. We do a lot of billboards. We do a lot of uh, uh, community outreach and community engagement with, with companies and with other companies. And it almost puts you as their first choice for an event or a sponsorship or something like that. And that combo creates a following like no other from my experience here. That's, yeah. that's really, really insightful because that's exactly what I preach as well. When it comes down to it, to build a community is really to be able to to, to make sure that the val values align first, make sure that you put you, you wear your heart, your sleeve on the heart or heart on the sleeve. There you go. Heart on the sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> your sleeve on your heart. Yeah. 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 So then it's, yeah. it's, that's when you're able to actually reach the people. And when you connect with them on that level basis, that's where you're able to grow that, lo uh, grow that loyal following. Yeah. And for you guys to invest in your community is huge. I, I, I would agree. And uh, yeah, it's exactly that. You know, restaurants are feeding the community. You are the community. You are where the community gets together to, to dine. And I think restaurants can get so operations and so in their head that they almost miss the like yumminess of the community, you know, the heart of the community and what they're doing and the memories of, I mean, I'm sure you have many memories of going to a restaurant and friends, family, and just a great experience and you always remember that restaurant with that memory well i i know for a fact that you you have a budget to work with which is the reason why you can reach so many people now for the restaurant owners who are just starting out and they're just building their own restaurant how would you propose what is the one thing that they can do right now that would make a difference automatically make them a thousand bucks hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you how to make a thousand bucks real quick. Yeah. <laughs> this would be perfect for clickbait. It's like yeah. Maxwell <laughs> teaching us how to make a thousand dollars in a day. Uh, exactly. in one day. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I don't know. Uh, I think where restaurants can do a little better for this is you do not need your staff doing digital marketing. You also don't need to hire a full-time person usually to do digital marketing. There are freelancers who can do it for less money and do it better, who have the experience to take it further. I just think, you know, a restaurant might think, okay, I need to hire a whole marketing team to make this happen. When really you can hire someone to manage all of it and take care of it. And to me, that will save you money and get you more reach and reach more people. Um, also join, join every community board you're on, join them. It, it makes a big difference. Uh, mm -hmm. that's a free, that's like free right there. You know, if you can, you know, if, if you, if there's the Salt Lake area restaurant association or the Vancouver, whatever, join it, participate. And then when an opportunity happens, you're there, you know about it. Wow. Okay. So just to recap, don't do marketing on your own, hire someone to do it. That's number one. And you think that's like the best way for you to be able to get your bang for your buck. And the second thing is to join community boards, make sure that you are top of mind within your community. And I think that's really, really on point as well, because I, I, I truly believe to be in your community, it's not about like asking for stuff. It's about giving and being able to, to, to be there with them as well and be in the trenches. So definitely very, very uh, good point on that. I do wonder though, like, and I agree with you to a certain extent when it comes to the, the biggest effect when it comes to social media or like marketing is to hire someone that knows what they're doing to do the work. But then on the other hand, I feel like a lot of our listeners and an audience, they don't have that budget to hire people, even for, even though it's like a contractor, let's say a thousand, let's say for example, on average, a thousand, 1500, $2,000. Do you think that's an average rate for a social media person? I think so right now that that's, that's pretty good. And if you're spending less than that, you might not be getting the bang for your buck. There yeah. you go. So I think like that itself to, to afford for a thousand, two thousand dollars might not be everyone's kind of, uh, jam. Let's say that. Yeah. Um, so for those people who cannot afford a contractor that knows what they're doing, what would you recommend them to do? 
I, what I would recommend doing, that's a, that's a great question. Cause you know, I'm, I'm chatting with those restaurants too. And I'm like, you, I know you need the support. How can, how can you do this without spending this? You know, uh, my recommendation is to start, yeah, to start taking photos for your social media and start engaging yourself and become your own mascot, become your own face to your restaurant. And uh, I'm sure some restaurant owners right now are like, no, like, <laughs> like absolutely not. But, but if you, if you can sell someone to come to your restaurant, you can sell someone virtually to come to your restaurant. You know, you're, you're, you own a restaurant, you're telling people how much you love cooking and you love the operations of your restaurant. You love the type of food you have, put it on camera, put it out there and it will make a difference. It truly will. It just takes time and it just takes the, the energy. And I know that's challenging because no one's busier than a restaurant owner. Like they are the busiest, busiest people. Um, but it's worth five minutes a day to log into Instagram, go live and say, we're eating and drinking this today. Come join us. I love that. I, that is a very, very actionable step that a lot of restaurant owners can do and they have no excuse not to do. And the power of personal branding, especially if it's something that you truly believe in love, it is, is near to none. It, that's exactly the reason why I'm doing these videos all the time. You see me uploading all the time and that's how we're able to grow that community. And for our viewers and audience that are watching and they wanna be able to learn things and take away from this is that, hey, you're the best mascot for your own company because no one loves your brand as much as you do. No one is in, as invested as you do. So if you're not even willing to put yourself out there, then why would you expect any result whatsoever? So I think it's definitely brilliant points that you brought up. And I think like this is exactly what is needed is um, to have that faith in your own company. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that social media tip is like at the end of the day, it's not just about the food. It's about the people behind the food, the mission, the value. And it always comes back down to that. Preach. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it's, it's totally worth it. And you believe in it. Tell people you believe in it. What is one story that is like a big, scary story or like the biggest mistake that you made that you're like, oh, damn, I want to get fired. Did you just turn on a campaign and it's like it ran for $30,000 and you didn't know about it and it just went out down the drain? <laughs> Never. No, that's terrifying. Like, even, yeah, let's let's get on camera and talk, talk mistakes, talk, talk problems. Yeah. <laughs> uh i uh, I've, I've got an example um we did a my, one of my restaurants has been around for 30 years and so we threw it was the first it was the first brew pub in utah and it's fabulous i uh, really love it and uh i myself and my marketing team we did a, a in a, a large scale event in in our city and it was it was so much work i mean there's so much that goes into it you know and uh, um, I, you know, I kind of waited on promotion too long. I, I said, like, people will come, people will be there. And people were, we ended up with a great audience, but it was this last 30 days that just terrified me. Are the people going to show up? Are enough people going to show up? Tickets say this, but I need them to say this. So my only, it, you know, I kind of like to say, like, I went to college for that, meaning I learned... <laughs> I learned this experience off this mistake. And my only advice to anyone is if you're doing an event, promote it early. As soon as you, as soon as you know what you're going to do in the date, tell people about it, get it online, start promoting it. Uh, even boosting it for engagement, $10 is worth it. You will see people engaging with it. So let's say how long of a duration, actually, no, for that story, how many people ended up showing up? We had 11,000 people show up for this event. It was huge. Uh, we were hoping for 15,000. So it, it, it was close. We were happy about it. It was there. But we knew about this event for about eight, nine months before the event date. Mm -hmm. And we didn't start heavy promotion until about three months before. And uh, I think it's just you know, uh, operations and marketing are busy and I, I was busy and I, I knew it was coming, but I didn't know today was the day I need to start, you know, and <laughs> I'm sure you can relate. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Well, at least people showed up. I, I think that's, that's really is, is the essence. And I guess like to bring it down a notch to, to people, we, we probably don't want 11,000 people to show up at 
at someone's restaurant. No, <laughs> no, no. And this is for a large restaurant group. We are a restaurant and a brew pub. So it was beer fest style. Uh, and we, and we, 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 we had the, we had the capacity to do this. Uh, mm. if you are a small restaurant and you can get 10 people there. That's a success. And 10 people will go tell other people about how great it was. That's insane. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing all these big tips. Now that we know the trick. Let's say if people do want 11,000 people to show up for their restaurant, who should they find? How they should they follow you? How like drop me some handles. I oh, I well, I've got I got a tip on how to get 11,000 people at your event. What we did. <laughs> what we did is we invited, we did beer, we sold beer, we made beer for this event and then we partnered with uh we partnered with 10 other breweries in the, and it's that community engagement, right? We partnered with 10 other breweries and we said, let's brew a beer together and promote it at this event. And so they, their audiences told other people about this event and that their beer is going to be there. I think a great way to kind of look at that is uh, food trucks and small restaurant uh, ex- events uh, your, your collective. And when you get that community engagement, you're also saying, Hey, we're doing this with this many people, uh, they will promote you as well. So that's another part of digital marketing is in that community engagement is shout out other restaurants that are doing it well, shout out other restaurants you like and say, we love what these guys are doing. And you know, that friendship can turn into something where they're doing the same back. I I love that. That's exactly how we always do our promotion and like cross pollinating collaborations. And I, I always just coin it in those terms to generalize it, but, but in, in, in essence, that's exactly what you guys are doing. So great job on that. And for people to actually follow you and along your journey with big mouth, do you have a handle that they can follow? Yes. Follow me. Give me a follow. Let's chat. Let's talk. So you can follow me at uh, Maxwell at big agency. You can check out my website, uh, bigmouth.agency. And uh, you can also check me out personally, uh, Maxwell Christian, C-H-R-S-T-E-N. Uh, I'm here to work with restaurants. I love what I do. I love supporting restaurants, bars, and uh, catering, culinary businesses, food trucks. Uh, I just teamed up with a, a, a food truck, San Diablo Churro Truck. They're a churro company, and they go and just do churros, and it's a lot of fun. I, I, I love what I do. So uh, that's my handle. Hit me up. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Maxwell. Thank you.